the demographics of the country are going to change. It, it's inevitable. Uh, you know, the Latino community in America is going to grow. If you stopped all immigration today, just by virtue of birth rates, this is going to be a browner country. Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of the thousands of people being killed by illegals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you, having lost children myself. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Look, they built the country. evacuation corridor that the IDF set up to enable the evacuation of civilians from the northern part of the Gaza Strip to the southern part of the Gaza Strip. People in Gaza need to die. Is that seriously what you and think? I am, I am kill two people Palestinian. I don't believe you did that. I am in the army, you know, boom, boom, two people. We're making a maximum effort to try to, to safeguard Gaza's civilian population. Is I don't care about Gaza. I literally don't care. For all I care, they can go out and to swim in the sea. I want to see dead bodies of terrorists around Gaza. Did you know more than half the states in the U.S. have a loyalty oath to the Israeli government, making it illegal to disparage or boycott them? In the U.S., inside of our Constitution, we have the First Amendment, which protects our freedom of speech. That allows for freedom of the press. It allows to peacefully protest. And within reason, we're able to share our feelings about our elected officials all the way up to our own president. And yet we have laws in more than half the states in the U.S. that make it illegal to do that about the government of Israel? I want you to think about that for a second. In our country, they made it illegal in more than half the states to be critical of another country's government. A teacher in Texas who's been there nine years, who's said to be excellent at her job, she can't work anymore for the government of Texas because she's not willing to sign an employee contract that essentially says that she must not ever boycott Israel or take any action that in any way penalizes Israel economically. Um, often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. This is not a Palestinian war against Israel. This is not an Arab war against Israel. This is an Iranian war against Israel through a number of surrogate terrorist organizations like Hamas, like the Houthis in Yemen, like Hezbollah in Lebanon and Syria, like the Shia militia groups in Iraq.
Nick Maynard, I'm a surgeon in Rockford and I've been going to Gaza for nearly 15 years and I've just come out to Gaza. Um, the ICJ on Friday, the Israeli defence legal team, said they're doing everything they can to safeguard hospitals in Gaza. Uh, is that your experience? Uh, not at all. I saw the Israeli Defence Force destroy a hospital in 2014, the Al Wafa Hospital. I visited just after that, having visited it before, and it was destroyed and, and reduced to rubble. On this occasion, in Al Aqsa Hospital, a week ago, I was in the hospital when an Israeli missile hit the intensive care unit. So I have seen incontrovertible evidence that they attack hospitals. And some people say, well, that's because they've got some Hamas inside the hospital firing missiles. Was that the case when the no, missile it was hit? No, it was a single shot, a single missile that hit the hospital. There was no gunfire going on. I was in the hospital. There was no Hamas uh, militants at all. deliberately starved the people of Gaza. Starved. I'm not using an exaggeration. I'm talking literally starving a population. what this government actually represents, it's not hidden from view, it's directly stated almost every day. Greater Israel, which means from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean, they want to rule over all of the territory. So there's no end game here politically other than complete domination or ethnic cleansing or slaughter or whatever. And with a government like that in Israel, there's nothing but war ahead. good people it's Rob Lee society will collapse people will not be able to take care of themselves they will not be able to get clean we're talking about sanitation we're talking about sewage the waste and sewage will back up this will cause disease people will not be able to get medicines hospitals they won't be able to get supplies they won't be able to get food there will be no schools no shelters no stores society will shut down there will be martial law at first but it will be sheer chaos after that. And even during martial law, there's going to be sheer chaos. The military and the police are going to look out for themselves. 
roaming bands of people looking for food, water, and anything else they can get because there's nothing to be found. This is what happens when you have a real collapse. I used to love this country. Now I hate it. I literally despise this nation. Yes, I still love the landscape. I still love the rivers, the mountains, the creeks. I still love it. And I, I love what it originally stood for. But I have come to hate this nation. Every three or four days, American cargo ships arrive in Israel. No, not, not Gaza. Not food for the starving people of Gaza, but cargo ships from the United States arrive with ships of weapons and ammo for the Israeli Defense Force. This is reality. You see, out of one side of the mouth, the United States government, which is nothing more than a vassal of the synagogue of Satan, this state of Israel talks about we're going to feed the people in Gaza, but we're going to send weapons and ammo to Israel to keep bombing them into oblivion. We spent 14 trillion plus over the last 21 years in the Middle East and Israel with the wars. 20, I mean, listen to me, in 21 years, almost 15 trillion, you could cut the debt in half. The United States lives to supply, support, and fund the state of Israel. Nothing matters, not the children, not the women, and not the men. Most importantly, most importantly, un underline it, Jehovah Father doesn't matter, and Jesus doesn't matter. And yes, those are the names. That's what the Bible calls our Father Jehovah. You see, when you hear these other names that start with other letters, that's from the synagogue of Satan, but many have bought into it. You're looking at the most evil, sick, and insane people in the history of mankind, what this nation has become. These are the so-called leaders and corporations that ride the broken United States of America. The best friend of the state of Israel, Donald Trump, said this, Biden is funding Hamas terror campaign. You see, it's always about who's doing the most for the state of Israel, not for the American people, but who's, who can do the most for the state of Israel? Who can pucker up and kiss the state of Israel's bottom the best? Who can bow down the furthest? Mind you now, the same people that say we're God's chosen people. Yet Jehovah never called them chosen. In fact, he condemned them forever. Forever. Jesus called the children called them the children of the devil in the synagogue of Satan. He blamed them for all the righteous blood ever spilled. He said their lineage went back to Cain. Jesus made them confess to being an impostors in John 8, chapter 34 through 38. Not the people of Israel. Jesus made them confess, you're not the true Israelites. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Amos 5, chapter 5, verse 26 calls the flag that they that they carry your father called it the star of the devil Jesus Christ himself called them the children of the devil in 8 John 8 44 and Matthew ch chapter 23 verse 15 Jesus blamed them for everything yet these are God's chosen people so the people, the masses, and I'm talking about mostly white people because this is a white this is a white problem. You know how black people like to say it's a black thing. I remember when I was growing up, people say it's a black thing. Black people would say it's a black thing. This is a white thing because most of the Jewish supporters are white. They're white and they call themselves evangelicals. So God Almighty tells us his truth. And Jesus, who is the son of Jehovah God Almighty, and who came to do the will of our Father, John 14, 10, who spoke the words of the Father, yet their truths are ignored, but the masses will accept the Jewish truth and deny the Father, and the Father gave you the Son. Let me tell you something. The United States and the evangelicals and the Trump people, they have been kissing the Jewish bottom for a long time. They bow down to them. Pretty soon they'll be so malnourished, they won't be able to do so. The United States will be destroyed sooner than you think. This nation is falling, and it has millions that will go, go down shouting how we must support the Jews and the state of Israel. You know, we did a teaching a few weeks ago when we talked about a false flag that is coming to the United States. 
And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about World War III. We're talking about the tribulation. We're talking about things getting worse. And we told you, you're going to see some false flags. And we had one in Russia and we had one in Baltimore. The Francis Scott Key Bridge just, just tumbled, just fell down. It was supposedly hit and it just collapsed right into its own footprint. We've seen that before, haven't we? This is important because it's talking about what's coming. What you're seeing in Israel is new. The state of Israel has never faced this before. And you're looking at war. You're looking at a real world war. And the problem is the United States and Israel, they're the ones who are trying to get it going. If Egypt, if Israel is going to surround itself in war, you're going to have Egypt is going to be drawn into it. The Turks are going to be drawn into it. And you're going to have Northern Africa is going to be drawn into it. Iran is going to be drawn into it. And you have, you know, Russia and Ukraine and then the United States and what's called NATO, the European nations. And now they've got some Scandinavian nations to join them. They are going to be drawn into it and you are going to have world war. And the elephant in the room is China. You see, the United States, a lot of people understand the United States are not, are not the same power they were 35 years ago. We're just not. We're not the big guy on the block anymore. There was a time that the United States was. It's gone. It's gone. People are out of touch with reality. It is true that the Israeli secret intelligence service called ISIS uses groups like Hamas and Hezbollah to do their dirty work. Yes, Muslims are radical, and I do not like their ways, and I do not like their religion because it's a lie to me. I've made it clear. I don't give a damn who I offend. If you're a Muslim radical, I don't care. It means nothing to me. I don't, what, what you believe to me is a complete, and it's a complete falsehood. It's a lie. I don't like the way you treat women. I mean, I, there's so much about Muslims I dislike. However, they've been abused by the Jews since the Jews took over in 1948, and quite frankly, even before then. So, a week ago, Tajikistan gunmen opened fire on a concert in Moscow, killing over, uh, I think, 140 and destroying the building. Now, the U.S. Embassy in Russia reported on its website that there could be a terrorist attack and concerts was possibly a target, and they warned Americans to stay away from such places. Then two weeks later, we had an attack. Even more odd is the, the U.S. State Department issued a statement just an hour after the attack saying this was not the work of Ukraine. So the U.S. knew in one hour that the Ukraine had no role Nobody else was reporting it. There were still ambulances there, people being hauled off, nothing. Nobody knew anything. But yet the U.S. State Department knew this was not the Ukraine. Certainly the U.S. spoke too soon, for sometimes it's best to be silent. However, this nation is anything but silent. It's a lying bitch that cannot shut up. It's a, it's a nasty, filthy harlot, and it loves to talk because it loves to talk, and when it talks, it lies. It should be noted that Israel has said it would help Ukraine in its fight against Russia. The mainstream media, all in unison, started reporting that ISIL or ISIS-K is claiming responsibility. Yes, ISIS, and we all know what it is, the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. So, out of the blue, during their holy month, we're led to believe that these Muslims attacked a concert in Russia. America and Israel are in desperation mode, and like any wild animal that's wounded, they'll do anything. They'll strike out. You see where this is going. It's going to war. This happens as Israel murders, bombs, and stars people in Gaza. This is what Jesus Christ told us when he talked about the Great Tribulation, a time like the worst time ever in, in history, and that if the Father did not cut the time short, no flesh would be saved. But 
for the elect's sake, for Father's children's sake, he will cut that time short and praise him for it. The state of Israel murders, bombs, and stars people in Gaza. And some people will say, well, that doesn't have anything to do with us. It has everything to do with you because they hate you more than they hate them. They've been doing the same thing to the United States, but in a more subtle way. Poison your water. The, the sorcery with the medications. The poison in the food. And so much more. Bringing tens of millions of people to your shores. So much more. And people don't say nothing. They just go along. You see, Israel will benefit from the bad Muslim, bad Arab bad Arab scenario. And it's going to, in my opinion, it's going to declare war and lead everybody into a world war. And it should be noted that Russia invited Palestinian leaders, including Hamas, to, to negotiate a Palestinian government. So who, who benefited from Russia? Israel benefits. Mossad is taking the, the attention away from Israel Israeli crimes and trying to redirect people's attentions and they have the full complicity of the entire media network but some people see through the charade this is why you have the southern border theater it's a tv show because it takes the people away from other things that are happening that are more important it's leading to world war three now, before we discuss Israel and the coming false flag attack in America, I want to share a few words with you about Russia and the synagogue of Satan. When Russia collapsed in 1992, it took a few more years for the entire nation to crumble. And how Russia crumbled is not going to be anything like how this nation crumbles. Totally different. This nation will fall to pieces. Just like I told you, it will go under. Western powers and corporations were eager to walk into Russia and plunder. Russia is a wealthy nation. Natural gas, diamonds, oil, so, so many minerals in the ground. It's a rich nation. F fertile ground, man, to grow lots of food. It's a rich nation. They looked at Russia as a gas station where you could fill up and supply the Western nations and make trillions upon trillions. They wanted to replace Putin and split Russia into smaller countries and regions. They wanted the resources. However, God the Almighty had seen enough of the Russian struggle. For remember, they were under the bondage of communism for 75 years due to the synagogue of Satan, which is the Bolsheviks that gave communism, communism to Russia. And 85 to 90% of the Bolsheviks were Jewish. So therefore, Jehovah Father entered, entered a man into the Russian lives. His name is Vladimir Putin. Is he of God? It's irrelevant to me. Your father has used men from all walks of life. Some holy, some evil to fulfill his will. However, Putin said something that I find incredible. He said Europe used to be the true holders of Christianity, and he is correct. It was Christendom. I've talked about it many times. He said that Europe lost it, and now Russia carries on in the true Christian faith. You see, what you see in white Western culture, you don't see in Russia. You don't see the rainbow flags. You don't see the mockery of God. I wonder why. So Putin put Russia back together, and only 20 years, he turned Russia into a real superpower. I mean a powerhouse. Russia and China have surpassed the United States and Europe. However, the so-called leaders and corporations deny this. They still believe they can walk into Russia and steal it all. They will be broken. For this is what the Ukraine is about. The United States has failed to realize it's not the world power any longer. God Almighty has reduced the United States more than the blind patriots know. They can wave their flags. They can march. They can hold up red hats. It doesn't matter. Iran, India, Brazil, and other nations have joined Russia and China, and they have their own coalition. The United States is not the big man on the block anymore. The, the UK hasn't been the big man on the, on the block for 50 years. 
The former Western nations still believe that they're going to run things. They're going to be broken. When these nations, all of them, in unison said, we don't want Jesus. We don't want no Jesus. Jehovah Father has obliged them. Now we have Israel and the United States along with its heel hounds in the United Kingdom and Europe desperate for war. You can envision the government suspending their so-called elections, even though we all know it's a selection, in November. Nothing is off the table, and it will not be. Nothing is off the table. When you're dealing with wild animals that are on borrowed time, nothing is off the table. Militarily, things have changed in this evil world. The United States, the UK, and Israel are not nearly as powerful. We've already talked about that, but it's the supporters that still perceive them as being the most powerful. The United States spends trillions of dollars on useless weapons, and yet billions upon billions are made by defense contractors. Nowadays, you can take a $500 drone packed with explosives, and you can destroy ships and tanks that cost millions of dollars and more to make. The Houthis, the Houthis, are recognized as responding to the genocide that is being perpetuated on the Palestinian people by bombing the United States ships and the United Kingdom ships in the Red Sea. And contrary to what the media tells you, they've been doing a really good job. This was not possible 25 years ago. You see, things have changed. And all of this stems from the state of Israel and the synagogue of Satan, because this is the root of this evil. The United States right now, let me tell you something. Earlier in this video, you seen a girl say that in the United States, there are 25 states that have a loyalty oath to Israel. So they can criticize Biden or Trump, but you can't criticize the state of Israel. Folks, anybody with common sense, if you had a half a brain, would look at that and think, wait a minute, what exactly is, what does that mean? It means exactly that. They can't be criticized under any circumstances. That means they are allowed to do any kind of evil, and the United States must go along. And here's the kicker of it. Most of the people that support them will go right along, all the way to their demise. But like I said, when they can't eat, don't have no water, and they're sick, and they're scared, they can call out to the state of Israel. They can call out to the Jewish people. They can call out to the synagogue of Satan and tell them, but I've supported you. Where are my blessings? Why aren't you coming to save me? Nothing's going to happen. Nothing. There's only one way. There's only one option. The Father gave you Jesus, and there ain't, there ain't no other options. I don't care if people talk about a hundred gods. All of them are lies. There ain't but one God, and he gave you his son. The Father's name is Jehovah, and he gave you Jesus, and that's it. Everything else is a lie. Take it any way you like. I don't care. The United States has taken refuge under the six-pointed star. And godless masses love to sit under the perverted shadow in this corrupt and evil tree called the, the hexagram. Amos 5.26. Your father called it the star of the devil. White people wave it and act like it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It is the United States that supplies Israel with all their ammo, technology, and military weapons to the point now that the United States doesn't run Israel. Israel runs the United States. Israel is a tiny blip, a little bitty piece of land. I'm sounding the alarm. War is coming. Jehovah has had enough of the evil ways of this nation and judgment is coming. Your father said he will destroy these people and mystery Babylon, which is Jerusalem. Regardless of what the lies you see on the internet in the churches, God the Father says mystery Babylon, your end times enemy, is Jerusalem. That's what the Bible says, because where Jesus Christ was murdered is Jerusalem. That's mystery Babylon. All you got to do is just read the scriptures. So much has angered me in the last few years, but one of the things that has bothered me bothered me the most is this nonsense about some white people that want to do the, we should all stand together as white people. Why would I stand with other white people that are evil and that support the devil's children? 
But young, some people actually say this. I'm being called to warn you. The evil powers of this world are going to take us to war, and you need to start getting yourselves ready. Now, you can't get yourselves ready all at once, but you can start doing the things that the Spirit of God moves you to do so. I am seeing as our Father shows me. They're going to take us to war with China, Russia, and Iran, and it will be World War III, and it will be the final. It will be the final act, the final scene. And then look up and know that your redemption draweth near. The U.S. is going to keep pushing along with its lapdog known as NATO, the European countries, and they will follow the U.S. who is following Israel right into oblivion. The United States has demonized Vladimir Putin and made Zelensky out to be a saint. Z Zelensky, Zelensky is a wild animal. The powers behind Biden have been pushing for war since he took office. The state of Israel will play a critical role in all this as they continue to murder and starve women and children in Gaza. In 2021, we had the great hoax. It was used to drastically raise the prices of everything and lessen the supplies of everything. You recall that people couldn't get toilet paper. That was a big deal. You can't get toilet paper. This was by design. What's coming next, folks? You won't be able to get anything. I'm talking about when there are no supplies to be gotten. The time to prepare is now. I can't tell you, I don't do prepping videos. I don't do survival videos. I do those through our Father. And our Father gave us Jesus. There's a spirit that lives in us. It's what makes us special. And that spirit will tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. It will move you to do the things that you need to do. It does not mean for you to run to the hills and buy all the food you can. It means to go and pray and ask your Father in Jesus' name to guide you and move you to prepare as he see, sees fit for you. Every accusation by Israel is an admission. You see, when they accuse you of something, it's because they're guilty of it. They use the old ploy of, we'll accuse you of what we're doing. There is nobody else that pretends to be the victims like the synagogue of Satan. Even Black Lives Matter pales in comparisons. In the United States and all Western nations, most people support and love the state of Israel. The Jews are looked at as an oppressed and victimized people. People are afraid to say anything about the Jews. In fact, most do not even like saying the word Jew unless it's in a positive light. Don't you think it should be like that for Jesus? I mean, that's the only, the only one that it should be like that for. And that these same white people will look around and see their lives are in shambles and then they, they, they can't put it together because the father doesn't want them to put it together. Listen to me. If your father wants you to put something together, folks, you will put it together. You will get it. You'll get it. The prophecy of revelation is here. No, not all of it, for I believe much of the prophecy has already passed. It's amazing that everybody who reads Revelation thinks that it always has to do with just this, the last group of people. Folks, there were a lot of folks that lived before us, and they had to live too. However, we are seeing the beast that is anti-Jesus, and it must be worshipped right before us. Now, in the future, as the Father moves me, we will talk more about it. In the United States... All Western nations, we have reached the pinnacle of fear and ignorance. The evil beings called politicians and corporations and even the pastors, the preachers, the, the professors, the cops, the military, would rather turn their heads to mass murder, lies, rape, and theft on a scale unmatched than to say anything critical of the state of Israel. And that is the truth. Even if people would agree with the crimes committed by the state of Israel, they would rather turn their head and go along than it's to speak the truth. If they'll do all this as Israel and Western nations smile as Israel commits mass murder, 
Do you think these naive followers of this evil, do you think they understand they would do this to you? In Canada and other European nations, it's becoming a law that you cannot preach or speak about the Gospels. It's becoming a crime to speak out against that which is evil. All this was foretold by your father and Jesus. Yes, we're really in the end times, the last days. The state of Israel will never be the same because of the crimes against Palestine. Yes, they have their supporters. But too many people have seen. Too many people are watching. And they're not going to forget. You see, it's just not going to go away. You see, you can't make it go away. You see, the one thing that te technology has done it has enabled people to see what they're doing. They're deliberately killing and starving innocent men, women, and little ones. And people are watching, and they're not going to forget. And all of this, I tell you, is the Father's will being done. You ask everyday Americans who are aware of the atrocities committed by Israel. Many are not. Only half of this nation even knows, knows what's going on. They're too busy watching sports, their TV shows, their cell phones, uh, they watch the news with the southern border. But when you do find some that do know a little bit about what's going on, you'll get two answers. The first, they support Israel, man. It's 100% and Israel's God's children and they must support them. And they are, the common thing you hear is Israel's got to have the right to defend itself. That's all you hear. The second, their answer is this. We just want peace for both sides. You will not hear the right answer from that would come from those who have a spirit of God in them, which is they are guilty as hell of evil. They are not God's children. A pastor will stand up and he will demand the congregation financially and verbally support the state of Israel, even if it means they go broke, hungry, and lose everything they have. But even more importantly, don't you know that John Hagee and every other pastor in all Western culture would, would tell every one of these people, you deny Jesus Christ and you better support the state of Israel. That's the God's honest truth. That's where we're at. This is the mindset of the most delusional people that's ever walked God's earth. Will you ever see these same people give an ounce of the same devotion to Jesus Christ. No, you will not, but you will see them broken. You, they've already, they're already starting to see it. And many of them are starting to feel it more and more and more. But I'm telling you, what's coming next, you, you, they're really going to start to feel it. But they're going to keep holding on to the synagogue of Satan. Hold on with all you got. They can hold on to them with all they got. There are people... This is mind-blowing to me. There are people far more critical of Israel and Israel than can ever be in the United States. The United States is broken. It's a broken nation. When you can tell a five, six, seven, eight-year-old child, if you're a little boy, you can identify as a girl something's wrong. When you can tell that same child, if you want to be a cat, you can be a cat. You see, something is sick and evil and twisted, and it started with the synagogue of Satan. Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to start world war. He cannot help himself. It's his nature. He was born like this. These are not my opinions or my words. These are the words of the one true father. And he gave you Jesus. See John eight forty four. Some are born evil, Romans 9, 21 through 23. Genesis 3, 14 through 15, your father told you there's going to be a seed of the serpent on this earth. Netanyahu is in control of a merciless army, but not a very good one. In fact, if you take away the technology of the Israeli defense force, they are not much. Beaten up women... Children does not make you tough. Netanyahu knows that people worldwide are turning on Israel. He simply doesn't care. He's going all out. 
He's going to invade Lebanon and anything else. And he's going to, listen to me now, he's going to expect the United States military to provide naval and air support. And there better not be any questions asked. This is when you'll know it's about ready to happen. Americans, not all, but many will go to their graves supporting the state of Israel and denying Jehovah Father and Jesus Christ. They will give them their last dollar and everything else, and they won't give Jesus nothing. And God watches all this. Jehovah Father sees all this. In the past few years, we have give, given hundreds of billions of dollars to the Ukraine. The, the United States has depleted its own weapons by sending them to Ukraine and Israel. And yet this is Father's will. I'm telling you, this nation is going to be broken. Soldiers don't want to be soldiers anymore in the United States. People that have gotten out are glad that they got out. This nation is going to fall. The United States cartel of evil is going to provoke Russia and China into a war, and eventually they will get their wish. And Europe is in just as much financial ruins as the United States. In fact, Europe is a shell of what it once was just 75 years ago. Americans, Europeans, and Nordic countries have become the equivalent of the man or woman who wakes up four o'clock in the morning and they find a couple of intruders in their home. They do not grab their gun and confront the intruder with force. No, they ask the intruder, have you seen anybody trying to break into our home? This is how these nations treat the state of Israel. They ask them who's to blame when they're looking right at the ones that are to blame. So all these white Western nations have wanted false gods. They want to worship men. They want heroes. They don't want the Father. And the Father gave you Jesus. Read with me in Judges 10, 14. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of tribulation. Tribulation. The tribulation is coming that Jesus told us it's a coming. Joe Biden, you would not send him to buy a loaf of bread at, at the store. You, how, how could you? You couldn't trust him to make it back. He's an old, perverted, nasty man. Yet this is the face of the United States of America. It's a curse. It's a curse from the Almighty Father. These hideous creatures are cursed, and they are called by the delusional people of America as politicians. Look at Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, Mitch McConnell. Look at these people, man. These are the people that are supposed to be the leaders of this depraved nation. The Bible says thou shalt not lie. To lie is wrong. But we can stop lying. And when we are truly committed to our Father and our Master Jesus, we do not lie ever again. You see, when you become committed, you try to put everything else, it's, it's done. You live a brand new life. But the greatest lie is these people are not only lying, they're lying to themselves. I'm talking about their right-wing Israel supporters, those who hold the Jews as God's chosen people, are living a lie. Their entire lives are a lie. See, they're no different than Muslims, Hindu, Buddhist, atheists, the, the, the UFO watchers. They're all living a lie, but these delusional people truly believe they're on the side of God. They deny the Bible while using a verse here or there to try and validate their beliefs and or their lies. You see, the fact that they cannot acknowledge the hexagram on the Israeli flag is the star of the devil, a mark that God condemned, shows you just how far how far this nation has fallen. They'll never acknowledge the truth and the words of Jesus, ever. And you will see a false flag attack and you will see it happen soon. Very, very soon you will see it. You will see it, my folks. You will see it. I want to read something to you here as we get ready to close. I want to read something to you. And we've read it many times, but we're going to read it again. How about it? The words of the greatest. There is nobody like Jesus. 
Nobody comes close to Jesus. The Father said, this is a part of me, and it's the greatest. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You don't go to the Father but by Jesus. There ain't but one way. One. That's all. My brothers and sisters, I love you. I thank you for being here with me today. Do not become but so emotionally invested in the theater and goings on in this world. For it's all the means to the Father's end. You are greatly loved. We've always, always been greatly loved. Your father foreknow you. Uh, he knew you before you came here. The Bible says this, that those that were, that he did, those that he foreknew, that he knew us before, he knew us before. I don't think we were, were not able to understand how loved that we truly are. Where would we be if our father didn't hold us in his hands? And he gave us the greatest gift ever. He gave us a part of himself and said, this is my son. You follow my son, Jesus. And your sons and daughters too. And we follow Jesus. We are truly living in the last days. Your help has always been your great heavenly father. And he said, you go through my son. You pray to your father for anything that you need. I don't care what it is. And you do this in Jesus name only. No other name. If one man was named Nick and one was named Rick, if Nick was was evil and Rick was a man of God, would Nick and Rick be the same people? Well, they got two different names, but yet some people would say, well, that's just one letter. Don't you see what they do with Jehovah and Jesus' name? They change one letter and it ain't the same father and son anymore. You're calling on something evil. What if Nick was evil and Rick was of God? Well, both names, both of them, sound similar, but they're two different people. This is what happens when people take away the J and try to use the live. Well, there never was a J. These are the people, they watch the internet, and they believe anything that these monsters tell them. Jesus Christ, we were warned about all this. The Bible tells us, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that feed these people lies. You go and you pray and you ask for help with anything that you need. You go in quiet and private and pray and talk to them as long as you choose for anything that you believe that you need. Trust them. Trust the Father. Love them. And hold on to them as we see this evil world destroyed for it will happen. I thank you for being here with us today in the name above all names. And again, the name above all names. And see, when you start calling Jesus by other names. You're not calling him by the name that is written. And these are the same people that when they call him by other names, many of them will say, yeah, I believe that the Bible's right. And if you believe the Bible's right, find me in the Bible where Jehovah's name is anything else but Jehovah and find me in the Bible where Jesus's name is anything else but Jesus. In the name above all names, his name is Jesus. I thank you for being here. Amen.